viewers, today I'm going to discuss the blood supply to the brain. The blood supply to the brain comes from two major arteries. The first one is vertebral artery. The second one is internal carotid artery. If we now take, for example, the arch of the iota, from the left side of the arch of the iota, there are two great arteries that spring up from it. The first one is the left common carotid artery. The second one is the left subclavian artery. So on the right hand side of the arch of the iota, we have one large branch, what is known as brachiocephalic uh, trunk. So from the brachiocephalic trunk, we have the right common carotid artery coming from it and then the brachiocephalic trunk continues at the right subclavian artery. From the right subclavian artery, there springs up the vertebral artery. So the two vertebral arteries together, they, as, you know, they enter into the cranium, they now join together to form part of the supply of the brain. So the, 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 the common carotid artery, as it ascends up from either side, it divides into external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. This division takes place at the level of C4 of the uh, cervical vertebrae. So now, as I said earlier, the blood supply to the brain comes from two sources. The first source is the two vertebral arteries coming from the subclavian arteries and the internal carotid arteries coming from the two common carotid arteries. So the two vertebral arteries, they enter into the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae. And as soon as they pass through the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebrae, they enter into the cranium through the foramen magnum. So at this level of the foramen magnum here, these vertebral arteries, as they enter into the cranium, they unite together at the level of the frontal medullary junction, and so they unite together to form the basilar artery. So before each of these vertebral artery unite with its own companion, the artery now gives rise to uh, one branch known as posterior inferior cerebellar artery. This posterior inferior cerebellar artery known as pica, as an approximation, it supplies the inferior surface of the uh, cerebellar, uh, 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 posterior surface, inferior surface of the uh, posterior lobe of the cerebellum. If you can remember, cerebellum has posterior lobe and anterior lobe. So the inferior surface of the posterior lobe of the cerebellum is being supplied by this posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So I'm from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, as it begins from uh, each of the vertebral artery, it also gives rise to a branch known as posterior spinal artery. So the two posterior spinal arteries coming from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, as you go behind the posterior part of the spinal cord to supply that part of the spinal cord. While anteriorly, the anterior part of the spinal cord is being supplied by a single anterior spinal artery. So this anterior spinal artery comes from the two vertebral arteries. So the two branches come and unite, you know, at the anterior aspect of the spinal cord. And so they form the two branches, they form a single anterior spinal artery that lies at the, you know, within the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord. So you can see that the anterior aspect of the spinal cord is being supplied by a single anterior spinal artery, while posteriorly, the posterior part of the spinal cord is being supplied by the two uh, spinal arteries, posterior spinal arteries coming from the posterior inferior cerebellar, um, posterior imperial cerebellar arteries. So this basilar artery is formed from the union of the two vertebral artery at the level of the pontu medullary junction. So as soon as the basilar artery is being formed, it gives a branch known as anterior inferior cerebellar artery or 
Ica. Remember here we have pica, here we have Ica. This anterior inferior cerebellar artery, it supplies the inferior aspect of the anterior, uh, it supplies the inferior surface of the uh, anterior part of the posterior lobe of the cerebellum. And it also supplies the superior part of the posterior lobe of the posterior lobe of the cerebellum. So it means that the posterior lobe of the cerebellum is being supplied by posterior inferior cerebellar artery as well as anterior inferior cerebellar artery. The posterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies the inferior surface of that posterior lobe, while the anterior inferior supplies the superior surface of the posterior lobe of the cerebellum, as well as the anterior aspect of that posterior lobe. And so, after giving rise to this anterior inferior cerebellar artery, there are also some small, small arteries emanating from the margins of this basilar artery. These small, small arteries are known as pontine arteries. These pontine arteries, they go deep into the substance of the pons and then they supply the, the, the pons. So after the pontine branches, we also have another artery springing from the side of the basilar artery and this is what is known as superior cerebellar artery. So the superior cerebellar artery supplies the anterior lobe of the cerebellum. So the whole of the anterior lobe is being supplied by the superior cerebellar artery. So the basilar artery now terminates into two branches known as posterior cerebral arteries. This posterior cerebral arteries, the, as they serve as the terminal branches of the basilar artery, they supply the occipital lobe. And apart from it being supplying the posterior, the occipital lobe, they also supply the inferior surface of the temporal lobe. So if you now look at this diagram, the occipital lobe, which is this side, it is being supplied by this posterior cerebral arteries, and also it supplies some aspect of the uh, medial side of the temporal lobe, and also medial side of the occipital lobe. And so after, you know, forming this cerebral, uh, the two cerebral arteries, so from the two cerebral arteries, you know, downward here, this constitute what we call the posterior, uh, posterior circulation of the brain. While the remaining part, you know, you know, the two internal carotid arteries that come to also supplement the supply of the brain, these you know, branches coming from the internal carotid artery uh, that, that supply the anterior aspect of the uh, brain is what is known as the anterior circulation of the uh, of the brain. So that means brain virtually has a posterior circulation and anterior circulation. Posterior circulation coming from the two vertebral arteries while the anterior circulation coming from the two internal carotid arteries. The internal carotid artery, as I said earlier, as it comes from the divisions of the two common, internal, uh, common carotid arteries, the internal carotid artery of either side enters into the cranium through the uh, carotid canal. This carotid canal is within the substance of the petrous, tempora, uh, petrous part of the temporal bone. So the internal carotid artery, as it enters into the cranium, it gives it its own largest branch known as the middle cerebral artery. This middle cerebral artery supplies the superior lateral aspect of the brain or the superior surface of the cerebral hemisphere and also it supplies the superior part of the temporal lobe. So the territory of the supply of the middle cerebral artery is from the anterior part of the frontal lobe, part of the parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and it ends at the level of the parietal occipital sulcus, and that is where the uh, middle cerebral artery supply, you know, ends. So this middle cerebral artery, it enters or it comes out of the lateral fissure of the cerebral hemisphere, and then it ramifies along the superolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere to supply that area. <clears throat> so that is for the middle cerebral artery. So from the internal carotid artery also, there emanates the 
anterior cerebral artery. The anterior cerebral artery supplies, you know, the medial surface of each of the cerebral hemispheres and also some part of the, uh, it supplies the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. That means including the medial surface of the frontal lobe, medial surface of the parietal lobe, up to the level of the parietal occipital sulcus, and also supplies the medial surface of the temporal lobe up to the level of the inferior, you know, aspect of the temporal lobe. And so this is the area of supply of the anterior cerebral artery. So it is mainly supplying, you know, the uh, medial surface of the uh, cerebral hemispheres, while the medial cerebral artery supplies the superior lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere, while the posterior cerebral artery supplies the occipital lobe and some part of the you know, inferior surface of the temporal lobe. So now for the cycle of Willis to be, to be formed, there is a branch coming from each of the internal carotid artery on either side. This branch is what is known as posterior communicating branch. This posterior communicating branch joins or unites the internal carotid artery with posterior cerebral artery so that it forms, you know, you know, something like part of the cycle from behind. And so again, the two anterior cerebral arteries, they are being united together uh, by also a, a, a trunk known as anterior communicating artery. So by this anterior communicating artery, uniting the two anterior cerebral arteries with these two communicating, posterior communicating branches from the internal carotid artery, there you have a cycle known as cycle of Willis. Cycle of Willis got its own name from the Thomas Willis that survived about uh, 400 plus years. He was a British doctor and uh, from his own name, you know, the cycle got its own name. So the cycle of Willis is enclosing important structures, including the optic chiasma, the interpeduncular fossa, containing the tuber scenarium, as well as the stock of the pituitary gland, mammillary bodies, and also posterior perforating substance. So uh, again, there are also some important branches from this, you know, middle cerebral artery that will go and supply the deeper structures of each of the cerebral hemispheres. This deeper structures, the basal nuclei, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and internal capsule. This you know, branches coming from the uh, middle cerebral artery are known as lenticulosetraid arteries. And this ones you go and supply those structures. Apart from these branches supplying these internal structures, also branches emanating from the posterior cerebral artery, also from the anterior cerebral, cerebral artery, they also contribute to the supply of the internal structures. All these structures that I've made mention in earlier. So uh, that, you know, comes to the end of my uh, discussion for today and next time you know good willing I'm going to discuss about the blockage of any of these arteries so that we can see how stroke develops by blocking any of these important vessels supplying the brain so viewers thank you very much